Now I'm going to start by inserting my columns. Please just follow me as I insert the columns. I have um, three circular columns right in front of the building. These three columns. So I'm going to select my column icon. The two to five. I want a faster approach, so I will just make it make this zero. Now insert my circular column. One, two, three. There. There we have it. Now I want to create some square columns. So I'm going to start from here. I have one here. I have one here. I have one here, I have another one here, Oh, I don't want a column here. Because I'll be putting one here. So that should be able to serve that area. Now I have my columns inserted. You can see, you see the 3D views. Now we have our columns. The next thing would be to insert our beams. Now I believe you should have noticed um, something here, yeah. this curved area. Now we're going to insert um, a particular curved beam there, and I'm going to be able to show you how we're going to do that. Already, we don't have the axis yet. I've not created the axis. I'm going to do that. Um, and we're going to be using offset axis for that. Offset axis. In order for us to do that, if you check this grid here, this line here, the distance from here to this line is 5950 mm. I think I calculated that. So, what we can do is just click on this axis. Offset, right click and then select offset like this. You take it the direction you want to offset to. So let's just press F2, right? 5950. So there, I have that. So I'll be using it. So the first of uh, my beams is just to select my beams. I want my beams to be 225 by 450. I want it to be, I want it to be centrally inserted. So uh, the first beams is I want to insert my horizontal beams. So the first one will be from this column to this column. Press escape on this from here.
Now this is where the copy image comes in. I click on this, the copy image will be inserted between here and here. So what do I do? Then I come back here to select the insertion method. How do I want it inside? I want, uh, let me over it, a copy beam insertion. So it's, it's in form of an arc. So what do I do if I want to insert it, I have to click the second column, then uh specify the radius of the hack so i have that i continue my pin so the let me yeah hey, sorry i've not changed the insertion method you have to change that in order to so you can see So that's how you insert a copy pin. Now I believe I've inserted all my horizontal beams. Now it's time to insert the vertical beams. So just have to select. So, so what, what is happening here? is that this beam now is going to be a secondary beam on this primary beam now i know you notice something that I have not connected this um, circular column. That's because if we check the architectural plan that we have, oh no, sorry, the elevations. You can see from the elevations here, the column starts from the ground floor up to the roof. So it's not connected to the floor at all. So now, We've been able to insert our columns and beams. The next thing is to insert our slabs. What do we do? I believe I missed a beam there. I got a beam to insert here. Now that's it. This region and this region are for the staircase. If you have noticed in the plan. Uh, now we are at a stage where we have our beams and columns inserted. We can all see in the 3D view here, we have the uh, first floor slab, this area, and you have the ground floor, uh, which is uh, this place where the column um, um, begins, where it begins here from the ground floor. So now, um, before we insert our slabs, I would want us to do one other thing, and that is to add uh, wall loads to our beams. Now, how do you add wall loads? All you have to do is just select um, the beams. You can select the beams. You can select multiple beams or select a beam. Then right click and click on edit beam wall load. So here in this window, you can either define uh, probably the length of the wall manually or you uncheck that for it to be spread all uh, across the total length of the, of the beam. Now you have a drop down here where you can select a uh, predefined wall. Uh, here we have the Malaysian wall and Singapore wall and the likes. You can also create your, which I have done. I have created a 225 mm wall, like a 9 inches wall. If I select that, it has uh, some uh, uh, values already, which is the wall you need to weight is 4.5 planetary per meter square. And uh, we have the wall thickness to be 225 mm, which is 0.225 meter. So all it needs you to specify is the wall height so for the wall height for this uh building that uh, is wall height is three meter 3.0 meter so after clicking that so it automatically calculates the dead load of that wall on the beam now you want to ask me how do you create this particular wall how do i get here so now let me go back to how to do that how to do that is you go to your building set out then you come to wall types library so here you can create different types of wall to use in your project so the first thing you want to do is create uh, a kind of the name of your wall like name your wall by just clicking on 
this add new load you could actually delete all these existing ones if you don't need them so you create on add new load it creates a new load then you can click inside it and name it let's say this is our new wall so the next thing you do the next thing you do is to also um, add new layer to it so what kind of layer so for the new layer i want uh, you tell it what kind of load you know for for different wall types uh, you have different uh, layers it could be tiles it could be light blocks bricks plaster or tiles so different loads that you want to add to your uh, to your beams so i want to choose a uh, tense blocks so it has a unit weight of uh, 20 kilonewton per meter cube and now we, the layer thickness now this is where i specified layer thickness of 2 to 5 mm let's say this is 150 mm let's say that is 150 mm and so it automatically calculates the load value per square meter so and if you also want to go a bit forward to edit the type of materials you can also come here and add new materials we want to specify some new materials to be used in your projects so let's press okay that new wall that we just de uh, defined now that we just created will be available for us in our wall load. so let's right click on our beams and edit beam wall load if you come here now you see new wall so that's how this 225mm wall got here so let me click on my 225mm wall specify the height 3.0 meter click so it automatically calculates uh, the dead load of that uh, wall from the beam now there is one more thing if you check from our, our architectural drawing you have windows such as this so this in proto structure they are referred to as wall openings wall openings so let us assume that on this particular beam the wall there has a window of 1.2 meter by 1.2 meter so what you do is click on edit openings so this is our wall it's like a solid wall with no openings at all so in order to create some kind of open like a window like to define that there is an opening a window opening there what you do is just come here click on add so add there is just like a predefined uh, value so here you specify the width the height the x uh, the position of the opening uh on the x coordinate and the position of the opening on the y coordinate in mm so let's say my the width of my window is one two which is 1200 mm which is 1.2 meter let's say the height also is 1200 uh, mm now from i want to now say okay the position is probably let me let me, let me assume a 2.5 meter on the x coordinate so it shifts it you know, you, you definitely see what you are uh, typing so now from uh, y coordinate that means the distance from this zero value upward so let me give it a let's say from 1 200 also from on our y coordinate so here you define an opening let's press ok and see how that looks in 3d you can see can you see this now so this is like a representative of what we just created so we have our opening so we have our opening here so that's how you create wall openings now having uh, created a wall load for this particular beam now all we have to do is to also generate for all other beams now instead of selecting one beam after the other like selecting one one beam and editing their wall load all you have to do is just to copy the wall load here by right clicking on the beam click the uh, you select the beam that which, which you have already created its wall load then right click and select copy beam wall load so after that what do you do you just select all other beams that you want that same wall load to be generated to now there is a faster way of selecting all your beams you can always do that from this uh, structure tree here by just uh, now we know our beam uh, already defined uh, wall load on the particular beam is 1b10 so you, all you can do you can just select all these beams press ctrl and click on the already defined beam and do what and right click and this then paste copy beam loads
now it is asking me do you want to paste the wall openings as well i don't want that because not all the beams here have this particular type of openings i only did this for an example each of them has their separate openings i don't want the openings created so now i have my beam load copied can you see can you see that now so you can see um it's taking shape i want us to see uh, this front very well okay okay now we know from our architecture uh, from our elevation here yeah, we know we do have uh, some openings here which you can create just like i've um, described now just not to waste our time now we already have this so the next thing i want us to do is to insert our slabs now there is uh, you have to be very careful and follow what is in the architectural drawing in order not to uh, uh, give a, a, a wrong output now here in the architectural plan this area there is no slab here the architect has already indicated it there is no, this is like an open space up to the roof level now there is an option there is no slab we only have slab in this area this area this area and this area so let's insert our slabs by clicking on our slab icon so this pops up specify our slab thickness to be 150 mm our concrete cover i want it to be 20 or rather let's give it 25. now let's check uh, the loading that we we'll probably want to use so for this uh, i want to use a room uh, i want to insert slab so i believe a room is enough now for the impulse load for the live load you either have a calculated value or you can also right click in this particular box here you right click inside it for you to list uh, some available commonly used values for different slab uh, types in different areas so you know you have different slab you have slab in foundries which has about 20 uh, kilonewton square meter uh, live load you also have uh, for bedrooms and dormitories general domestic use you have for balconies hotels and motels which has about four kilometer square meter so now i want i just want it to be a, a slab which is for general general domestic use or let's select the bedrooms and dormitories so after doing that we are we have our dead load and impulse load calculation with our safe width so the loading is complete so what we do is just click in into the areas you want your slabs to be inserted and that's all now we have our slabs we have our slabs let me uh, uh let me let me deactivate the wall and uh, the, uh, the wall layer so we can see our slab very well so now here we have our slabs so we have our slabs so now that we have our first floor the next thing that we want to do now is to generate our second uh, our roof level this is our first floor this is our first floor level this is our ground floor level so now what generates our roof level what should be on this uh, level so how do you go about that what you do is you first insert story you insert a new story which is your roof level so you come to your story here right click insert story we already have zero one like i told you in the first part of the lecture when you're inserting a new story you have to enter a number that is that is greater than the existing highest number the highest number presently is story one so we want to insert one more story we are not inserting two more stories just one more story for the roof level so i'm going to enter two and then we want to enter we want to insert two more story then we are going to enter three so which means addition of two more story so i just want to enter well, i just want to insert one more story so i enter the total number of stories will be two so I press okay yes so now we have story two here is the roof level with nothing on it at all so now the next thing is you could start modeling again by inserting your columns one after the other but this is proto structure and the reason for using software is to also increase your speed you know to increase your productivity and make you deliver projects on time within budget and uh to to, to to be very consistent with what you're doing so now what do we do we go back to this story remember 
what we want to do now, what we want to do now is to generate story since what is on the first floor is similar to what we are taking to the roof level so we would like to just generate uh, the story from the story one which has elements already to story two which doesn't have any elements already remember if you are generating story you have to have a, a story that has elements selected it must be selected if you have a story if you if, if you story that is that is currently selected as an empty uh element that doesn't have any elements at all you cannot generate story from it how do we how, how do i mean if this is selected this story too that has nothing on it is selected and you come to stories and, and you say generate story it will throw up an error which is only the populated stories can be defined as source for generation that's because any story selected will be automatically regarded as the source story where you are generating from since we want to generate to this particular story we have, we have to have a story that has elements selected which is story one so after selecting that, we come to us, we we'll right click and say generate story. So we have this. We are generating from story one to story two. So we, you select your source story, select your target story. So here you have the uh, you, you have the opportunity to select what you want to generate to that story. I wouldn't want slab and slab blocks to be generated from the first floor to the roof level. So I don't want that. So I don't really have any very really slab other things. I don't have them there. I don't have any slab openings that I want to generate. I don't need any slab strips. So model lens, you can leave that. So I have columns that I want it to take upstairs. I mean, from this level to the roof level. So I have beams that I want it to take up to. So now what you do is just press OK and voila, you have your, then you close, you have your stories inserted. So can we see that now? Now we have our ground floor, our first floor, and this is our roof level. Remember, we actually generated the walls with it. So what do you do? You can just delete all your walls. So you can delete that by just coming to your story two. Come to your story two and just select all beams. Select all the beams here. Let's select all our beams. Right click and delete beam wall load. And so now you have your roof beams ready. So if they are of different dimension, you can always edit the beam sizes by just you can come here, select the summary table. Here you have your width of the beams and you have the thickness of the beams. If per adventure you are asked to reduce the beam to reduce the roof beam size to let's say 300, all you have to do. So I did them automatically. Just select the first value here. Come here. You have this black arrow displayed. Just click it. You have all the columns selected. Enter the value you would like to change it to. Let's say 250 and press enter. Oh well, that didn't change. Oh well, that's some kind of misbehavior that could happen once in a while. Let me try again. Okay, well, I didn't change. So actually, you can change your values from this table. It's supposed to work the way I've just uh, described. So I won't uh, bother too much about that. And there's a beam that just changed. So how do I do? Let me take it back to what it is, uh, which is a 450. Let's put it at 450. Okay. Now, truly, this at this level, at this roof level, the beam doesn't have any wall. But there are certainly loads on it. There will be the roof load and some other load that you want to add. So I could right click also, say edit member loads. So I don't have verb, but I have some uniform load on it, which I want uh, to add to it. So all, you, all do I do is select the kind of load which is a uniform load on it. This is the point load, this is like a wall load. And you have a uniform load that you could so I hit all let's select the new load a new load so let me select this now so I'm assuming a dead load I'm assuming a dead load of uh, let me say 1.5 clinician per meter and I'm assuming a life load of a two or uh, two kilonewton per meter all this you would have probably calculated again so now that's the so press ok 
now I have loads. I have a, a load on this uh, particular beam. So I could check again to see the loading. So this self the self weight of the beam is 2.4 kilonewton, 2.43 kilonewton per meter. The life load 1.5, the uh, the dead load 1.5, and the life load 2.0. So let's go back. So just as we have uh, defined, it, we can also copy the beam uh, manual load which we've just uh, defined and paste it on all other beams if they are similar. So that's how you generate loads on your beams. So you could have some other kind of load that you want to add to your beam. So that's how you just go about it. Now, our model now, you can see it's a, uh, it has taken shape. And uh, what we have left to do is just to run our analysis. So let's just do something that uh, I think is uh, really, really nice for us to do, which is, uh, to create maybe some few openings which I've described. So let's uh, let, let's try and create an opening here. Let's edit uh, this uh, be more load. Let's create an opening here. So let's add 1.5. Okay, no, no, let's check the architectural drawing just to make it more realistic. Oh, it's not dimension here. So let's just give it a 1.5 or 1.5. Which is 1500 mm by 1500 mm. Let's coordinate. Let's say it's from a uh, 2.2. Oh, sorry, 2200. Let me make that error. 2200, which is 2.2 meter. Then uh, 1.2 200 mm from Y. Uh, yeah. so, well, let's let's bring it down to one meter. So it won't be too much. Let's give it now 100, yeah. So we have this. So you know, I believe you notice uh, this uh, circular columns also. Now we have them as tall as we want them to be, just like they're here. So one thing we've not done is to insert their connecting beams. So let's do that. So they are connecting beams. Let's take a beam from here. But in not to have any break in connection, this particular beam will need to uh, delete it and reinsert. Because what, what do we want? We want it to be, we want the beam, the beam to be considered a continuous from this end down to this circular column. So it's going to be a beam with about four sections, which is a section will be from this circular column to this column, then from here to here, making two sections, from here to here, making three sections, and from here to here, making four sections. So like a four spans to be rightly put. So I will delete this, press control to select it, the section, and delete. Also, the same thing applies to this. Because if you don't do that, it will consider it being um, separate and your detailing might be messed up. With that so you have to know where uh, you should have your continuous in on where you want it to be just simply supported. So I take this down. Okay. Also take this down. I have another beam here. Okay, now, I believe we can see it very well now. So we have it just the way we want it. I hope it's understood. So that's how we have uh, all our shapes now. So the only thing with, I think we need to replace now is our beam loads, which we have, uh, we deleted the, beam, the existing beam there, so we need to Replace the wall load, uh, the uh, member loads on it. Oh, sorry, we've not copied. 
we have to copy from an existing bin just copy the model loads So I just right click and paste. Paste copy bin loads. Well, so uh, the next thing we're going to do now is run an, uh, an, uh, run our analysis. So how do we do that? We go to our analysis, building analysis. And go to the analysis tab. So this shows that we've not done any analysis at all. So firstly, let's check our building model check to see if there is any error. So it's one of the first thing you should do to check if there is any preliminary errors. So it will also guide you if there is any error, it will tell you where that specific error is so you can go back to your model and check. So at the moment, we don't have any error at all. So we'll close this and run our analysis. So now it's uh, building analysis completed successfully. Okay. So uh, one thing after the analysis is uh, for us to check some few reports. As I mentioned in the outline that we'll be looking at some reports. And one of such a first report is uh, the, uh, the axial load compression report. Let's go to our analysis again, our building analysis. Select the axial load compression report. These are some of the reports you need to study well to give you some insights into uh, specific values. You can, by the time it opens the report, you can also save it as PDF for reference. So, so uh, we we have this, uh, the report now. We have the on the composed loads. You can see two eight four six point four. And now uh, for the live load, we have 418.9. Same thing for the decomposed. Now the, the load has been decomposed to beams from slabs to beams. We have the same value up there and the same value. So what this uh, will tell you is that at any, at any point in time, the loads, when it is on decomposed and decomposed must not be different. It can only be different with a tolerance of at most 5%. If it is more than that, then there is a problem in your structure. So this is one of the first reports you might, you definitely want to check before you go ahead with your uh, with your design. So let's close this. And go back. Now we can start designing. Now um, before we start our designing of our slab, I would uh, like to set the slab types. Um, this is to define the end conditions of each slab like you learned in your manual approach You know uh, every slab has a condition where it is continuous and where it is discontinuous So like uh, when you talk of the continuous edge and the discontinuous edge. So in order to do this automatically without any um, without any uh, um, Stress all you have to do is just select all the slabs You can do that by just coming to this selection tree here and the structure tree yes let all the slabs present in the structure where you want to select set the slab types right click on it and set slab types automatically so now let's just press okay it will assign the slab type to all the slab let's press okay so now to design our slab it's as simple as just um drawing a line across the slab so you use your slab strip uh use a slab strip uh now what you do is select the end condition of the slab strip out the reinforcement where it terminates where it is continuous you have to select that and also you have to specify the direction uh, first we will insert the x direction first so the x direction is activated if you are inserting in the y direction as like this way and then you activate the y direction before you insert your slab strip so let's insert um, the x direction first so what do i do now you while inserting your slab strip 
you definitely might have errors that will pop up just like when you are designing but the good of this is that as the error pops up don't worry you address them one after the other so let's insert our first um, slab strip so i'm inserting this slab for this slab first i'm designing for it first and these are the end condition from the start to the end which means the reinforcement would grant and terminate at the ends here at the ends of this uh beam them area so what just spread out just outside the slab press control on your keyboard to um, activate the auto to have a straight line so press release and press so now we have a warning here that our deflection check isn't sufficient like uh it fails the deflection check which means the section isn't sufficient now you can solve this problem in two ways just like you have learned in your manual approach you either increase the thickness of the slab or you increase the area of reinforcement provided so let's press ok let's not worry about it right now let's finish in, uh, inserting our slab strip then we'll run analysis and design which will give us a full detail report that we can now check one after the other to solve the problem and redesign so let's insert for this um, slab also we are still on our x direction okay that has no problem for this slab it is continuous um, in this area so we want to insert um, one slab strip for these two slab to design for the x direction So it cuts across the two slab we have no problem there at the moment now uh so now we are done with our x direction slab strip so let's activate our y so now for the y for these slabs okay we have another one in there don't worry about it i'll also i'll, I'll solve each problem in different ways let's insert for this this terminates here okay okay so for this also okay no issue there so now let's close our slab strip properties window so now we have inserted our slab strip we have few errors uh deflection check that failed so let's go to our concrete design and slab analysis and design let's um reset uh reselect all the steel bars and design if you are designing for all stories probably you have more than uh one two three stories in the building you can select all stories and just design so now these are the slabs where we have uh the section insufficient error which are filled to the deflection you can see uh the uh it's uh the uh the deflection here um is greater than the allowable so that's why it's giving us that error let's press ok just wait for it to load the a design report where you can actually check the particular strip that is giving you that error okay now we have uh, we have this so we can now check check so this is the first one slab strip x1 story one and the slab is 1s1 so that's where we have the deflection check the field with section insufficient so let's trace this slab strip x1 x1 then slab one is one so let's just check uh slab strip x1 so this is it so it's on slab one x1 so the slab strip and this is the reinforcement here so select that reinforcement right click properties so just like i said you can address the issue in two ways either you increase the thickness of the slab if it is allowed or you increase the number of reports this is the current area of reinforcement which provided 565.49 millimeters square per meter so we can reduce the spacing to increase the number of reinforcement let's reduce it to 150 first or let's say 175 to see if it will work so after entering the uh, desired spacing click update if it will not work it will pop up again so since it doesn't pop up that deflection field then we can use that let's close now which one is our next insufficient area uh, we have uh, okay this is sufficient no error here we have okay no error here okay we have an error here section is sufficient and that is on that slab strip y3 on slab 1s3 okay slab slip slab strip strip y3 on the uh 1s3 so, so y3 
slab one is three so this is the slab and this is the reinforcement here so let's right click let's check the properties okay presently is at 200 mm spacing let's check if 175 would work okay that's not working it's telling us no 175 will work let's check 150 150 okay 150 worked so let's close now okay let's check which other slab again okay we have a slab 1s2 and a slab strip y4 1s2 slab strip y4 1s2 slab strip y4 slab strip y4 okay this is slab strip y4 okay and this is the reinforcement let's check now we're not going to increase spacing yet we're not going to decrease uh, reduce the space in here let's use let's increase the thickness of the slab okay so what do we do just select the slab and properties increase the thickness of the slab there fit and close okay which one is uh, uh next okay we have only three issues so those are sub now in order to check if what you've specified is really work you go back to your design and redesign so let's check design only reset insufficient steel bars design so let's see if we're going to have any uh failure again so as it stands no issue anymore so if you check check through your design again you have uh, all of them sufficient but now this is where you still want to probably do more truly it is sufficient but the deflection are so close so what you do you go back reduce the spacing in order to get it more appreciable so although it is sufficient but it is too close it is too close so these are the checks you you, you check them to be very sure that what you are providing is really really working and under satisfaction so for this night is sufficient and you can see the difference between the allowable and the actual deflection this is the actual deflection and this is the allowable so this one is very okay you can see this is also sufficient but it is very close you can also go back and recheck check on what you do so now we have them sufficient so that's for the slab so the report we just saw now is what you can also save as pdf just to um just for future reference of what uh, of what the calculations were like so now uh, another design is let's go check our beam designs so you go to your concrete design beam reinforcement design the story beams okay it's telling us the analysis result is not up to date so we can just run analysis to be sure so that it, so that it uh, transfers uh, the analysis result the correct one to the beam design in order to have a proper beam design okay analysis start analysis because at every point in time when you're working you must have the correct data at hand so if you make any change it's good you rerun your analysis to have the updated um, analysis result let's close let's go back to our beam design beam reinforcement design and presently none of our beams is designed so these are our beams so um, you can design your beam in two ways either you use interactive design or beam design in batch mode batch mode means designing all the beams at once all the beams in a particular story or in the whole structure at once interactive design means you're selecting a specific beam to design it individually if i select this beam now and just press on interactive design it brings me that particular beam this is the beam now so I can see uh, where it's uh, the, what it has provided at the moment. It's providing a lot of things here. So you can toggle, change the link spacing, uh, do some update on it to see uh, to see what. It, okay, as you're changing. So so that's interactive. The interactive design is designing specific beam individually. So when you press OK, if it is OK, you change this to green. So, but it is always advisable use your beam design batch mode. So you only get to use interactive design when 
you're checking just to see a particular beam what is being provided in that beam so if you are not okay what is being provided you can remove delete edit and update that particular beam with interactive designing so let's check beam design we select all bars and let's calculate okay close so presently we have a uh, issue with only this beam only this beam so let's check it with interactive design and see what um the problem there okay you can see what it provides now so it's providing a lot of reinforcement y12 in some places y12 in some span y16 here for y16 uh, this support now this is where your own experience comes in you probably don't want just too many reinforcement so you have the liberty you have the freedom to make a lot of changes here in the interactive design window i could come here i could come here and do uh, some changes i could come here remove this reinforcement completely i could come here change the number of reinforcement to probably two come here if I remove this completely see the effect come here and just uh, I could change this one I could change it to 2y16 if I want come here and change this to also to 2y16 so if it's not going to work you definitely be seeing all this red so you have to now toggle it change it so the difference here is that instead of you redesigning with your hand you're just um, playing on the value to have a satisfying and appreciable number of reinforcement in your beam. I hope you get that clear. So like this 2Y12 here and this 4Y16, I may not want it, I may try and decide to remove this. Now it has its own effect that it's um, causing it. So if what I want, okay, let me have 2Y16 down there and let me have another 2Y16 if that would solve the issue. But no, it's not really solving it completely. But in this um, table here, we can see there is no error. But what this is telling us is that, okay, I have an error, but generally, it's still going to work. So if you press OK, if it's working, no. If it's not working, you have to go back, recheck. So it says, do you want to reselect the steel bars? select now it has reselected so what you do you press ok it's okay you can also check other beams to see what is being provided for in those beams to see if you are okay or you're not okay so that's what the interactive design is all about for this beam now no issue you have to y16 you have to y12 in some places so you are always free to change the reinforcement maybe you don't even want white to in your beam you can change them to any reinforcement you want you have no failure okay, everything is fine so that's about your beam design the beams are designed just like that now our next task is to design our columns so the same approach we go to our core concrete design column section design okay so it selects our select column design batch mode and uh, we select all of us Okay, now we've got issues. We can see the software is um, giving us some output that is just not realistic because it's not possible for you to have in a 225 by 225 column have this kind of number of reinforcements stacked inside it. It's not just possible, not realistic at all because this is approximately eight bars. Four Y16, two Y16, and another two Y16s so are eight bars in a 225 by 225. Uh, Colon. So what do we do? We probably have to now interactively uh, reset all these bars and uh, get the proper bars to be uh, provided. So let's select this interactive design. So just use this key, uh, this um, reset bars icon, reset bar. So it resets it to a, a standard form format, and just press OK. Now we have a green tick for Y16 works perfectly for it. So same thing applies to all others. So same way you edit all other 
um, full on in that uh, Now, apart from just uh, res uh, resetting the bus, you can also uh, do some checks on your enforcement. Um, okay, let's check the column analysis. You'll be able to see the ultimate load there. Ultimate load at the moment. So now it's presently it's 8Y system for this column, which we don't want and it's not even realistic. Let's reset the bus and check the column analysis once again. We have 4Y16. The ultimate load is 300.9 kN. Um, so we have a pending moments in the front direction. So now you can see. So press OK, it works. Now we have all the columns designed. Uh, we have the square columns uh, having a 25 by 25 column having 4y16, and we have the circular columns having 6y16, which is the minimum number of reinforcements in a circular column. So one of the things you can also get here is a design report. You want to click on the design report so you have some options include all the combination in the report which you might want include interaction diagram in the report you may choose that display all combinations in the interaction diagram include column wall sections reports you have the opportunity of editing these uh, reports even after it has um, exported it um, for your use so when you press ok it generates it as a document which you can save as pdf or as a word document depending on how you want to use the document so let's wait for it to uh, come up with that. Okay, so here is a column design report. So with this report, you can read through, check every calculations to understand what is being designed, to actually understand the behavior of the columns, what they are being subject, subjected to, if truly what it's provide, what it's provided is actually enough. If you have all detailed information yet from the um, the load uh, from the loading to the reinforcement provided to the area of reinforcements uh, to the number to the links everything you have information and the shape of the particular column it's talking about so you have you have the opportunity of exporting it to an MS office document or PDF document for use to attach it to your structural calculations So let's close this part. So now we're done with our column design, beam design, slab design. So the last uh, but not the least is the part foundation design. So in order to do that, you have to go to your um, story zero, which is your foundation level. So you select the activate the story zero. Or the only thing that will be uh, that will be uh, active on the on this story are the columns. You only see the column. You don't see any beam or slab in this uh, uh, level because it's the foundation level this particular level yeah so our uh, what do you do the easiest way if you are in certain part foundation as if you are very sure that every column here is uh is going to have a part foundation so all you have you can actually insert the part foundation automatically on or by just alighting over everything like this when you're inserting the part foundation so just as i've highlighted you can do that and just right click is a very fast way of uh, inserting part foundation so right click you have this option insert part base and it will insert part foundation part bases in under all the columns now you might also if you are designing a combined foundation for instance maybe you have uh, two columns that are very close these are not that close but assuming that these columns are very very close let's check the distance between these two one meter so definitely this is a bit close you might want to consider having uh, having some kind of a combined foundation for these uh, particular columns so what do you do you select the two columns right click and say combine selected columns and walls for shared foundation design if we do that it combines them now when you select any of them is select both which means they are already they are now combined for any foundation design so if you select right click if you say insert part base now they will have a common foundation now let's say calculate so there is a the foundation the part base shape which is one meter by 1.725 if you want it to be square 
to have the same dimension you have 1.6 by 1.6 right so you are the one to, de to determine which one is economical and which one you want to go for so definitely if i'm to choose i will choose this which is economical so you have all your uh, calculation set the checks at the moment is okay the share at the face of the column the share distance of t from the column everything is okay and you have your uh reverse bet y16 at 250 you can also toggle it by changing you can also change it here yeah? so try to change it here if you want to reduce it okay so just press okay press okay and you have a combined fact this you can also check it in 3d here yeah? this is it so same way you could select all other columns and give them part base you can select everything like this let's on let's on select this select everything okay let me use the filter to select only column okay so oh, let me insert part base create typical footing for the selected columns now if you select this that means it will create the same sizes of part footing for every column that you have selected not considering there are some columns in this structure that might require just small part bases there are some that requires big so if it's if during the design now if it encounters a column that needs two meter by two meter part base that is what it will give it will provide for all other columns even if there is a column that just requires just one meter by one meter part base it will give it that two meter by two meter part base. so you should uncheck this so that it will be economical if it's if it encounters a column that requires just small part bases it gives it the smaller part base it requires a bigger one it gives it so it has a different uh provisions so let's press okay so now it's designing already so you can see as it's adding the part bases okay now let's check something for this footing it's 1.4 by 1.4 for this footing is 1.3 by 1.3 if we had selected that create typical footing this will never be 1.3 by 1.3 if 1.4 is the biggest here then it will also be 1.4 so now this that, that's the advantage of not using typical footing except if you want now this is one two by one two imagine using 1.4 by 1.4 this would be a waste of material on your part and it's not economical at all so that's why using that may using that uh, approach may not be advisable except where you are very sure that all the columns definitely are uh, going to have typical footing so now that's all about the part basis and i must say at this point you're already through with your designing so the next thing you want to um, think about is now producing your structural detail which is actually one of the areas that takes so much time so in order to produce your structural detailing what you do is just come to your concrete design and load proto details Might take some time especially if your pc is not that fast okay. so i expect you to automatically open proto details okay proto details is open you can see it down here it's open already now this proto detail and it's our it's already loaded our project our project's already loaded here we have its project lecture zero two so what it will ask you is how do you intend to create your uh, detailing now you could use auto generate details it will just generate all the details for you or you could start by creating a new drawing creating a new drawing means you create a new sheet then you'll be the one to insert a specific details on a particular sheet maybe your beam details on a separate sheet column on a separate sheet if you are the type that likes auto generate let me just check using this auto generate details okay now so it's asking us which story should it should it um, insert we want all the details 
from our story zero you definitely need the form plan uh, the column application where I going to display the part details uh, the reinforcement and the column elevation the column schedule beam elevation and the part footing so you also are from the story zero one so you also want to display your slab any slab put any slab opening and uh, the reinforcement everything so you have another option also for you to print uh, how to display your labels print steel bar labels so you see everything by the time you start practicing and uh, try to change the way your details are produced so let's just click on draw you could choose you could choose a draw on separate files insert the sheet depending on what depending on your preferences so insert quantity table is very handy this helps you to see uh, the number of reinforcement the length of reinforcement quantity table is more like a scheduling table where you can see the total tonnage of reinforcement being used total length of reinforcement being used for a particular uh, structural element so that will help you to um, arrive at your costing easily without um, necessarily bothering yourself to check for length or calculate the area of reinforcement, uh, the length of reinforcement in a particular element. You click on draw. So it won't draw it automatically. It will bring this cross here that you're seeing now that I'm moving around. So you have to be the one to click on a particular area. If I click now, if I click here now, it will start generating. So it's now generating my drawings. okay now it's true you can zoom out to see everything that has been generated you can see they are enormous these are all the details you require now let's check the detailing one by one so this is your part footing layout your part footing layout this is it some people call it uh, your foundation layout you have the quantity table uh, this is your material properties so the soil parameters so this is an information that can be good for anyone to read to know what uh, the parameters you used in designing uh, those part protein or any structural element this is your slab details you have a slab details here and with it comes the quantity table the scheduling table you have the you know, each reinforcement which are already named here for instance if someone is trying to trace a particular uh, enforcement here you can always see so we have this y12 the bar mark is 3 at 200 mm space in v2 so let's try and see if we can get it from the table so y12 okay the bar mark is 3 pm bar mark is 3 y12 so we have 58 of it now 58 of that and the length individual length of that uh, uh, bar uh, of that length of uh, the individual length is a uh, 6.05 meter which is 6050 mm and the total length now is 350.9 meters so this is the uh reinforcement schedule it's a straight bar so you also have this so it's telling you the shape the quantity so you have a good number of information to help you yeah so this is your we have a this is more like a beam layout a width layout so you also have this again uh, this uh, this column layout your column layout you have the reinforcement in it the 4y16 each of the reinforcement and you also have the quantity table also you have the circular column you have uh, the straight column uh, like stand starter bar So you have the column elevation so the column column layout so now uh, don't be confused here you have two different column layer but at different stories now this is story two this is more like from the first floor from the first floor slab to from the first floor to the roof level that's the story two um from the ground floor to the first floor that's story one so now why this is it's because uh now it's considering the columns to be in two sections because definitely when you're constructing the column you don't just uh, construct a column from ground floor to roof level immediately from ground floor to like maybe second floor it's definitely in stages that's why the elevations also are in twos you can see this is from story one from the 
foundation we have from the foundation this is like the starter bar gets to the ground floor then with some um, length which is lapped with the uh, first floor column that goes up up to the uh, and, uh, from the ground floor to the first floor slab this particular length here now would now lap with this one this is the second uh, uh, second floor column and the, uh, from the first floor to the roof level you can see here it terminates this is a beam section a beam section this is where it terminates and it's cramped return like that so that's why it's drawn that way now these are your beam details these are our beam details now for a lazy person or someone who is not an engineer now you have your pad uh, details also these are your different parts so you have the pad foundation the pad uh, basis their details you have everything here also uh where's our okay yeah so you have everything both their sizes and their quantity table also so this would help uh, maybe the uh, iron benders on site you don't have to rack your brain to give them the shape the lens to cut everything is already stated here now for a lazy person you could just take all this and print them out as it is but for a professional engineer that you want your work to be very neat to be understandable you have to export this to a CAD environment that you are very good with most commonly used is a uh, AutoCAD, so you can always export this. You could just come to your um, to your file here, export it to DWG or DXF that can be opened in AutoCAD. You could just take this, export it, drawing the DWG. You can check the version depending on the version of AutoCAD you're using. Maybe 2010. If your AutoCAD can open 2010, uh, you could choose where to export it to. Or just click on export if you are okay with this current directory the project folder so let's click, click on export currently it's processing the export and you'll be able to open this in autocad then work on it change colors change um, uh, line weight different things and put everything into probably a drawing sheet so these are drawing one we can open this now in autocad let's open our autocad I'm using AutoCAD 2016. So now, it's not as if you cannot do everything here also, but because AutoCAD is a generally CAD environment, so you can. It's easy for you to work with in AutoCAD. Create your drawing sheet, create a, a different layout to work with, change colors, match the lines, and work on it to have a beautiful structural detail. Now, we are not really done with structure uh, with uh, proto details. Here in proto details, you would have noticed we've been designing all, all elements since, but we've not designed our staircase. Now, proto details, proto details is equipped to do some other some uh, detailing and designing also, such as staircase, which you can access through design library. Stairs. Now, you have different staircases. You have this is kind of staircase. This is a staircase supported by two outer edges. This is another staircase supported by three outer edges. You also have this staircase also, separate steps. You have uh, this kind of staircase also, depending on the staircase you have in your structure. Also, you have the spiral, and you have a uh, spiral which supported at outer peripheral, or you have the spiral supported at inner peripheral. Some kind, this kind of staircase, those ones that normally have a column, just one column, in it, like this. So, you can do this you can design your staircase in our uh, architectural drawing we have a we have this particular type of reinforcement we have this reinforcement here also the same thing with the with the, uh, the staircase here rather so now you could use it use this to design your so and you all you have to do is supply all this data now it's easy for you to supply them because already you have uh, you know your story right so it has to be three meter, three thousand mm. You have your stair width from your structural drawing, which you check, and it's already labeled them. You have these are the B's, B, B. So you check the um, sizes uh, in the architectural drawing and supply all this data. All you have then redesign. Designing now it's true with the design and detailed drawings. 
click on detail drawing look for a place to insert it on your sheet you click somewhere then you have your stairs just like that just like that you have a detailed drawing so the only thing left for you to do is just um remove some things change something check some things remove unnecessary detailing put it in the right perspective to have a beautiful detail now let's um open this uh, exported drawing to see now this is everything now in autocad what we what we exported then you can start working on it so i hope you understood what i've just um, took you through so i believe you do so now that's all about it the detailing is actually uh an area where you spend much of your time designing modeling takes few hours few hours you model and design but now to put everything into beautiful detailing is what uh, takes much of our time when working on projects such as this so thank you very much and uh, this is where i would be stopping for now thank you very much